In this video, we're going to keep going through the E2 reaction and want to talk specifically about the E2 reaction and our old friend, the Newman projection, and how to use Newman projections to figure out stereochemistry of E2 reactions. Like I said, the stereochemistry is going to be crucial here. And before we go, though, into too much detail on Newman projections, let's just remember what exactly the E2 reaction is. Remember that it is an example of an elimination reaction. What does that mean? Well, it means that we're going to be forming an alkene. And secondly, the two stands for the fact that the rate determining step is bimolecular. The rate determining step is bimolecular. And the two species that we use in our rate determining step are the base, which is CH3O minus as shown here, and also our substrate. And you may see also the counter ion. Let's just draw Na plus. Here we could draw K minus or K plus, that's fine too. Um, this would give us Na plus Cl minus because Cl minus is going to be our leaving group here, and as well as CH3OH. Okay, so what's important here is to note the stereochemistry of this situation. Notice your carbon chlorine bond is in the plane of the page. And your carbon hydrogen bond, which is being removed by the CH3O minus, is also in the plane of the page. So they're both in the same plane, but one's pointing up and one's pointing down. And the what we the key issue for the stereochemistry, the E2 reaction, it's always this way, is there's always what we call an anti peri planar relationship between the hydrogen that's removed and the leaving group. Now you might also see or hear of anti-periplanar being referred to as anti-coplanar, um, which is fine for our purposes. Uh, but essentially the angle, or we're going to call the dihedral angle, is 180 degrees. So let's get into how we might be able to visualize this using a new end projection. It might not always be clear whether two groups are anti-periplanar or not. So for a Newman, remember Newman's just a matter of perspective, and molecules are three-dimensional objects just like anything else. And what we're going to do for a Newman is we're going to choose to look along a bond. And let's say we'll look along the carbon 1, the carbon 2 bond. And we're going to draw our central uh, axis like this. And one of the helpful little metaphors for a Newman might be to think of it as looking like looking at a clock. So we're going to just care about six times on our clock here, 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Or they're all separated by two hours, and if you actually do the math, you'll realize these are 60 degrees apart from each other. So if I was it's my eye and I'm looking at carbon-1, what would I see? Well, I would see carbon-1 to chlorine, this bond, in the plane of, of my view, and it would be pointing straight down. So it would be at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. And then next, we have this hydrogen, which I'll draw over here. This hydrogen would be pointing up and slightly to the left, so this would be at our 10 o'clock. And then we'd have, let's say, our other H. This H would be pointing back into the right, so this would be at 2 o'clock. And because these are in our immediate field of view, they're pointing out at us, we draw the these lines uh, we can see these bonds. We see the bond between carbon and the chlorine, carbon and the hydrogen, and carbon and this other hydrogen. Now, we also see these other atoms from carbon-2 poking out behind um, the atoms. So we can draw these ones in as well. This green hydrogen is going to actually be in the plane and pointing up. So this is going to be at 12 o'clock. And let's draw this one as red. So this red hydrogen will be pointing down at about 8 o'clock, down to the left. And then finally, we'll draw this blue hydrogen in. And this blue hydrogen will be at 4 o'clock. And because these are 
in the back, we can show these bonds like so. Okay, so here you can see clearly that the angle between the hydrogen and the chlorine is 180 degrees, like we said, anti periplanar, just like six, six o'clock and 12 o'clock are on a clock. So six o'clock or 1230, I guess, those times you'd have a relationship of, of 180 degrees periplanar between the hour hand and the minute hand. Okay, so let's use this Newman now to figure out what our product would look like. So what would our product look like? Well, we'd be taking our base, which is CH3, uh, CH3O minus, and we'd be taking our hydrogen away. And we would then be forming a new double bond between the hydrogen and the, the sorry, the hydrogen would be removed. So this pair of electrons would be moving between the two carbons and we'd be displacing our leaving group. So these two hydrogens, these two hydrogens that are on the same, uh, same side here, um, they're going to be on the same side of our new alkene. Remember, this is carbon one in the front. So carbon one is going to be, let's draw this as carbon one. And this is going to be carbon, or the, sorry, this is going to be uh, the hydrogen on carbon one as well. So one and two. Okay, so now we have our alkene, we have our orange, and we have our pink. They're on the same carbon, that hasn't changed. Now note, we're forming an alkene. We're going to have a situation where this orange hydrogen is gonna come become sort of like, you're gonna go down this way. Actually, let's draw this in black. Uh, they're gonna become sp2 hybridized, right? So they're gonna be coming flat. So they're all gonna be sort of smooshed towards each other. So this pink, or sorry, uh, Orange hydrogen is going to be the same plane as this red hydrogen, and the pink hydrogen is going to be the same plane as the blue hydrogen. So that means that the orange hydrogen is actually going to be what we call cis to the red hydrogen in this case. So this is going to be red. And since the carbon two is on the same side, the same carbon uh, has, has the red, red hydrogen as well as the blue hydrogen here, this blue hydrogen it's going to be on this side. So this would be cis, and these two would also be cis. So that is a very simple example of how you can apply a Newman projection to a simple uh, molecule. Now, let's just say we wanted to change one thing. Let's say we changed our, our orange hydrogen here, and let's say we changed it to a CH3. What would this give as our product? Well, we're going to change this orange hydrogen to a CH3. That means that we can change this orange hydrogen to a CH3 as well. And we can also change this orange hydrogen. So once you, once you draw out one example of this type of transition or of this type of mechanism, and once you draw one Newman projection, you can actually apply it to give lots of different types of products. For example, we can, we can modify this even more. We can modify this, let's say, blue hydrogen. Let's say we make this a CH3. And then that would mean that we are making this blue a CH3. And then we are also making this blue a CH3. So notice how our orange CH3 is actually on the opposite side. It's on the opposite side is our blue CH3. And this has consequences. This means that, that our blue CH3 is going to be trans to our orange CH3. So we can say these are going to be trans. So you can use this Newman projection to project, predict what your product is going to be, whether it's going to be uh, with the relationship between all the different groups on your Newman projection are going to be here. These are going to be, these are going to be uh, cis right here. And of course, these are all going to be trans. And you can keep modifying this. I mean, we could, we could, if we drew this out, 
you could drew you could draw even more or you could put like a something else let's say I put a fennel a fennel group here and so then that would make this fennel and that would make this fennel so you get the idea once you've drawn out uh, one type of, of uh, mechanism for the E2 like this, and once you've drawn one Newman projection like this, then you can modify it, uh, however, depending what your substrate looks like. And you can get, from there, you can figure out what your product is gonna look like as well. So it is a, a useful tool to be able to figure out what the products of your E2 reaction are.